looking at provisions made by God for our healing. And last week we talked about what? Joy from Proverbs 17.22. I'm just trying to show you what we studied last week. That a merry heart is as good as medicine. The Bible says it make it good as medicine. And I told you that a merry heart, when you are always joyful in your heart, it's a kind of healing virtue that God himself has made available for us. And I also told us that you must do everything according to Proverbs 4.23 to protect joy in your heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, guide your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life. So I said that last week, that you must guide your heart. And I mentioned things that you must guide your heart from. I said one, what's the first one? Believe that man will always be man. So stop expecting too much from any man so that your joy will not be lost. Two, I said, stop opening your ears or eyes to know or see the negative things people are saying or doing against you. Because some of you want to say, what are they saying now? Kinoto song pa mibai. Kinoto song pa mibai. It has a way of killing your joy. I also said last week, number three, that belief that God's word is supreme. Anybody can see anything, but believe that God's word is the final. It will, mind, it will help you keep your joy. The next one I also said, don't deprive yourself the good things that gives you joy. Every good thing that gives you joy, that makes your joy to remain, don't deprive yourself of it. We also said, open your ears to pleasant words, according to Proverbs 16, 24. Open your ears to pleasant words, which means don't stay in the place where they will keep cursing you or keep saying negative things into your life. And the last one we said last week, come, sorry, we said, share your pain so as to gain relief. Don't conceal pain in your heart. If there's anything troubling your mind, share it. The white man says, or a wise man says, said, uh, says that um, our problem shared is half solved. So today we are looking at the last part provision made by God for healing. We'll be looking at the, the anointing today. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27. I'll wait for you to be there. Please, my monitor is not displaying uh, scriptures yet. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27. Provisions made by God for our healing. Are you in Isaiah 10, 27? I read, and it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulders and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed how because of the anointing the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing now it is the new king james version that puts oil in front of it now the old king james version says the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing the niv version says the yoke sh shall be broken by the anointing so permit me to let you know that one of the provisions that god made i will explain to you what the anointing means that god made available for our healing as children of god is the anointing and i will explain as we go on to this teaching one of the provisions that god made for the healing of us his children is what i call the anointing somebody hearing me it's what I call the anointing. One of the provisions that God made available for our healing. The anointing. Now when we talk about the anointing, listen. The anointing can be uh, explained using these words. Now look up now if you are finished writing. The anointing is the unction placed upon his servant for service. I come again. The anointing is the unction 
placed upon his servant for service. The anointing is the unction placed upon his servant for service. The anointing is the unction placed upon his servant. Now we can also call the anointing the power of God upon a servant. We can also call the anointing the authority that backs up the word of a servant. The authority that backs up his word, is back up his word for action. So every servant of God that is genuinely called is anointed for service. Is anointed for what? For service. That's why they carry an ex anointing for ex to do extraordinary things. Every servant of God that is genuinely called. That's why I always tell people that come up to say, God has called me to do his work. If your calling is not genuine, hear me, there will not be unction. There won't be anointing for the extraordinary. Now, and this anointing, we just saw in the book of Isaiah, it is by it the yokes of sickness, yoke of disease, yoke of bondage can be broken. I'm going somewhere this evening and I want you to please follow me very well. Now, we're going to look at examples. I will show you two examples. In 2 Kings chapter 13 and verse 21. I want all of us to see it. 2 Kings 13, 21. You know, long after prophet Elijah had died, Otiku wants to see he had died, they had buried him. In fact, he had rotted, his flesh had gone. It was only his bones that were inside the grave. The Bible says they buried the man. Let's read it. Let's read it. Proverbs, sorry, 2 Kings chapter Eight, uh, chapter 13 verse 21 13 21 13 21 not 18 13 21 I'm waiting for you thank you 21 this is 13 1 now 13 21 labor satire basket I'm waiting for you thank you so it was as they were burying a man, look at this. They were burying a man that suddenly they spied. They were burying a man that suddenly they spied a band of raiders. Where am I? Where am I? Okay, this one. What version is King? Uh, uh, give us the old King James, but well, it's still the same thing. A band of raiders. And they put the man, look at this, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, can you see? Elisha died. Elisha had been buried. His flesh had eaten up. It was his bones that were left. But you see, when God calls a man, he puts his unction upon his life. Now, pay attention, we are going somewhere. Now, the Bible says, and the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha. And what happened to him? He revived and stood up on his feet. Now, what brought him back to life? It is the unction that God placed upon the body of Elisha. Elisha had gone, but the unction for service was still in him. Now, and when that unction touched a dead body, instantly it came back to life. The anointing is an unction upon the vessel that God has chosen for service. I come again. The anointing is the unction God has placed upon the vessel he has chosen for service. Now look at another one in Acts chapter 19. Acts 19, 11 and 12. So that you not be as if it is just the Old Testament. Pastor, it cannot happen in the New Testament. Look at Acts of Apostles chapter 19 from verse 11 to verse 12. Look at this. And God wrote, which means God did, special miracles. By what? By the hands of Paul. That's the anointing. Doing wonders by the hands of Paul. The Bible says, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchief or aprons and the disease depart, disease depart from them and the evil spirit went out of them. Now, the Bible says they took aprons, for instance, maybe Paul was ministering, he used handkerchief to clean his body, you know, and just drop it. You can't see the anointing. It's an unction. You can't touch the anointing. Hello? It's an unction. 
Now, people now took that same handkerchief, the apron that he used to cover his body. They took it to the de- people that have disease. They touched them, they were healed. Paul didn't go, but the anointing was present. Am, am I communicating? Now, they took his apron to go and meet demon possessed. We have had such a miracle here before. I remember there was a time I, bl- I prayed upon oil. I said, okay, everybody bring oil to church. We prayed upon it. One of us, that time, Mrs. Jahara, took the oil to the house. As she took it to her house, you know, the, house, the lady she helped to be living in her house started screaming, fire, fire, fire. What happened? The girl was just crying fire. She didn't even know. The girl was just crying fire. She said, ah, we thank God we just came back from church. The girl didn't follow them to church. Uh, pastor, we see be in church. So they brought the girl here. And she sat in front here. And I asked what happened. They said she's just screaming fire, fire, fire. As I laid my hand upon her, what me I wanted to do was to lay my hand upon her to say, you are released from the fire. You know, as I laid my hand upon her, she just started screaming, yeah, yeah, you know, Jomio, I'm a witch, I'm a witch, I'm a witch. Ah, witch, bitty bow. If you see the girl, at least, at most, maybe she'll be nine or ten years old. And she was just screaming, I'm a witch, I'm a witch. The oil she brought home was burning us, was burning us. As she brought the oil home, the fire in the oil was burning me. Ah. Then I knew it was case, a case. So I had to pray for her, minister to her, then she started confessing. Who brought you into witchcraft? She mentioned another person. I asked the woman, Do you know her? I say yes. I say, go and bring the person. So as they brought her, she sat here. The first one sat here. How did you go into witchcraft? They, they told us that they were having a celebration in their church. They distributed pop off. They ate the pop off in church and they started seeing themselves flying from that day. Now, look at how the anointing. I didn't go to the woman's house, but the anointing oil that I blessed was taken to the house. So, one of the provisions that God has made. For the healing of his people is what? Is the anointing. I come again. Is what? Is the anointing. I have had that kind of testimony to in winners. Somebody died, was taken to the mortuary. Another person came to Bishop Oedeko and said, Sir, please, I won't allow my brother to die. Bishop gave him his handkerchief. They took the handkerchief to the mortuary and touched the person with the handkerchief, and the person came back to life. You can't see the anointing. But it is the unction that God placed upon his service for extraordinary service. Extraordinary works. That's why you see that God did special miracles. Without the anointing, please help me to move to Chuku beside this mom. Put him somewhere else. Now, without the anointing, there cannot be special miracles. So this evening, let's look up, let's concentrate so that we will not miss what God has made available for our healing i wrote here hallelujah i say hallelujah the anointing is the power of god that breaks yokes we've seen two examples the anointing is a special grace unction for extraordinary works and i ask a question here why is it that even with the anointing many are still sick and struggling today i want to answer that question why is it that even with the anointing, you see pastors are praying for people and people are still dying. You see pastors are speaking words of declaration and people are not getting healed. Why? I have two answers that we are going to treat in tonight's meeting before we begin to pray. Why is it that many are still sick and struggling today? Number one, understand that the anointing responds to value. Take note of that. The anointing Response to one thing was that value now which means if you don't have respect for the anointed the anointing will not work for you it is the anointing you value that works i come again it is the anointing you value that works i come again it is the anointing you value that works do you know that a lot of people still see servants of god Genuine ones, so as she be your bit, me no ni born again, ni born again, me no. He's born again, born again. He speaking tongues, I speaking tongue. You know, so many children of God, because 
of this end time, there are so many teachings now that has made several children of God to lose value for servants of God. I was studying in my morning devotion yesterday and I studied the case of uh, um, that centurion. You remember him in the Bible? The centurion that the servant was sick. And anytime they call anybody a centurion in the Bible, he's a commander in the army over 100 people. So the man, one of his servants was sick. Some people now said, let's go and call Jesus. Jesus will heal them. The Bible says they went to call Jesus. As Jesus was coming, the man thought within himself, I am not worthy. Now look at that level of honor. honor. And the man said, I am also not worthy to go and meet him. Please tell him to speak just a word. My servant will be healed. Now when Jesus heard it, the Bible says he was moved. Uh -uh. How can somebody so much honor God's servant like this? You don't know that the anointing you don't honor won't work. The anointing you count as ordinary will remain ordinary. The Bible says, and Jesus spoke the word. Go tell him that his servant is healed. The Bible says when the people that went to tell him came back, they were asking him, at what time was your servant healed? They considered it and it was at the exact time Jesus spoke the word that the servant was healed. Jesus didn't go there. But value placed upon the anointing was what made it to work. Let's look at one more scripture on that. In Luke chapter 8. Look at another value on the anointing. Luke chapter 8, 45 to 48. Luke chapter 8, 45 to 48. Now look at this. And Jesus said, touched me. Thank for coming now. When all denied, everybody denied, we didn't touch you. Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude trunk, the trunk thee, and pressed thee, and sayest thou who touched me? Wait for me. That, uh, can't you see that everybody is just drawing you? The multitude want to feel you. Now, and you are passing through the, everybody is touching you. But you know why Jesus was saying who touched me? There was a touch that was with value. Now, somebody was touching with one purpose. I wish I can so much touch the anoint, the cloth of this great servant of God that I can get my healing. You know, Jesus is the son of God. But as at that time, they knew him as servant of God. So don't think I devalue him. It's my, it's my Messiah. He's the son of my father. Now, Jesus now said, now after Peter said what he said, show the next verse. And Jesus said, somebody had touched me for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Power is gone out. Which means that everybody was touching but somebody's touch brought power out. You better don't let familiarity to be passed over familiarity can make the anointing not to work for you ah, I see my pastor every day now ah, in fact at times I see him on Okada at times I even see him while he's sitting now look at and Jesus said somebody had touched me for I perceive which means that the woman the way she didn't Everybody was pushing and so maybe some people were aware they were pushing. Somebody touched the cloth. It didn't make sense. But somebody was looking at the cloth of Jesus as powerful as Jesus himself. Look at value. Let's now see the next verse. Verse 47. Thank you. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and fell down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and now she was what? Healed immediately. Do you know after she must have shared this testimony everybody want to go and touch? I'm showing you why if somebody can be in church one year and not get one healing because you are looking at your pastor God's servant as uh, is he not pastor Prince Verse 48. Look at the statement of Jesus our Lord after this woman confessed and mentioned what she did. 
And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Now look up. Uh, during the, the Holy Ghost Congress of last year, I couldn't attend. I couldn't go to the camp. But they put the message live. The last day of the meeting, Pastor Adeboe said, lift up anything you can use to connect to the anointing. Ah, and where I was, I was not even in church. There was no material around me. The only thing I had with me was 1,000 naira. So I, I lifted up the 1,000 naira. I knew people would be looking at me. It was at our shop here. I lifted up the 1,000 naira. I was watching the video. And Pastor Adeboe said, as I will be praying, just lift your hand up with that substance. So I lifted it up. He said, once I say in Jesus' name, drop it to the floor and pick it again. So I said in Jesus' name, I dropped it. He said, pick it up and begin to say what you want. I said, Lord, this is an instrument of power. I believe your servant have blessed this. You know, I started speaking what I want. As long as I have this in my possession, Lord, I will never have financial challenge. Do you know, beloved, even when I want to wear another trouser, I will pick that. Every day I was going out, I was putting that 1,000 in my pocket. There was no day I was not getting financial blessings until I didn't know how it disappeared. <laughs> For It didn't expire. For like three weeks I was using it. I now had a temptation when uh, 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 they, they, they said uh, one, that 1,000 naira will no longer be valid if you don't go and... No, I didn't, I didn't drop it. If you don't go and drop it for the new note, I didn't drop it. That was, around that time I misplaced it. So I was careful. That one, everywhere I was going, I would check my pocket. Is it with me? Would, in fact, it just come one with. The last trouser I wore, I didn't remove it. I went to the trouser, I didn't find it. I sat, that 1,000, I signed on it so that I would not spend it. I looked for everywhere. But do you know that throughout the season it was with me, it was working for me. Please, place value on the anointing. Don't, don't allow the character of fake servants of God to make you believe that all servants of God are people that should not be honored. Yes, there are fake. But when you find genuine servants of God, please place value on the anointing in their lives. So I've shown you one of the reasons why several children of God are not healed today. When the pastor said, God, you are healed, they don't go with faith. But look at how Hannah left the altar. When the servant of God said, Madam, Madam, go, your prayers are answered. Uh -uh. The Bible says she stood up. She went back rejoicing. Rejoicing based on the words of man. She rejoiced because of the value she placed on the anointing. Let's look at number two. Second reason why the anointing is not working for so many today. For the anointing to work, hear me, you have to put demand on the anointing. I come again. Put demand on the anointing. Put demand on the anointing. Put demand on the anointing. What does it mean to put demand on the anointing? Ask for it. Ask for prayer. You know, put on screen for me, James chapter 5, verse 14. One of our men had, went to the, uh, to the hospital was to complain about his hearing. So, he, he, now, told the, he now told the wife that the doctor said uh, he will need a uh, hearing aid to be, hear, to be able to hear well. The wife now said, why not go to our pastor? Let pastor lay hand on your ears so that you can hear. You know what the man said? He said, there are cases of people that doesn't have leg. There are cases of you that are blind. How can I carry this small problem to Jesus? Why will I be bothering Jesus about when there is hearing the aid? So he didn't come. But listen, one of his children, he now noticed that when he will call this child in the house, he get one here. He will call and call. So he took her to the hospital. The doctor examined and said, the same problem that you have, it's about to happen to your daughter. It's like this thing is becoming an inheritance. Doctor now told him, why not go and pray? Go and tell your pastor. 
Then he now came. He didn't have to talk about his own. He gave me his daughter. He said, sir, this is what happened. I now notice that my daughter is having the same. I went to the hospital. The doctor now said, I need prayer. That this thing is becoming an inherited thing. You know what I started doing? From that year, about three or four years ago. Is it up to three, four years? Yes. I told the girl, every service you come to church, let me lay hand on your ears. Now, I've been laying hand on my ears now for three years. I now asked her last week Sunday, how is your hearing? He said, Papa, I can hear very well. You, you need to, listen, you need to know how to place demand. Don't wait for them to come to use anointing to look for you. Remember the case of that boy that was born too. They were, tw said they were twin in the womb. They gave out to them one died. But I was shocked. I was here in the altar, on the altar, when the woman came and said, Papa, I said, what is it? This child I'm backing. Backing is not a good English. What do you call it in a... Is it babysitting? Those of you on the on internet, I don't know the English of backing, but it means we are carrying the baby at the back. Do you know that? She said, this baby is two years old. I said, it's a lie. He said, Daddy, this baby is two years old. Ah, you know what I said? I said, you know what? Every Sunday, be bringing him to me after service. I will be putting him on my chest. Let me see what will not allow him to grow. So every Sunday, I will put the baby boy on my chest. I command your hands, grow. Your legs, grow. Everything that is hindering growth, come on. That, you know, I started praying pray, until... I did it for two years. Until the boy started walking. The boy started running. The boy started growing. So the mother used to call him my son. We have a problem in the Pentecostal church of today. We are over, over spiritual. You say, are we not all the same children of God? Ah. Please, if you have issues that you know that is beyond natural, Please demand. Okay, let's see what, what the Bible says. James chapter 5 and verse 14. Let's look at it. James chapter 5 and verse 14. My monitor has gone off again. Look at this. Can you see it? Is any sick among you? Let him do what? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray for pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the wait for me he didn't say if anybody is sick pray for yourself because some of you are so proud she born in for the middle day for but she born again like she born again baba wani baba wami did you know long mean they should never bat here but anointing is what makes the difference that's why we are instructed. Is anyone sick among you? You know why the pastor's prayer will not work? If it's the pastor using prayer to come and look for you. Sister, can I pray for you? Brother, can I pray for you? He is, no, 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 no. You are placing value on the anointing and placing demand on the anointing when you go search and say, please, I need prayer. Sir, I need prayer. I, 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 I'm not saying you cannot fast on your own, no. but there are issues that you yourself know that I just need prayer. I just need prayer. We are not yet true. You now talk about the outcome in verse 15. It says, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. The prayer of the elders. Why do you think that those politicians will go to our fathers in the faith? Please, I pray for me over this election. They are seeking the anointing. 
That's why you must never get, number one, listen, take note of this. You must never get too familiar with the anointed. Don't get too, and that one is a warning for those of you that are extremely close. It's not bad to be close, but don't allow your closeness to make you commonize. We'll be praying now. I'm through with preaching. I summarize here by saying, show your need for the anointing. Ask to be prayed for. Show your need for the anointing. Show that you need it. Demand for prayer. Please pray for me, sir. I say we should be sharing testimonies when we even live here. At least on this on this altar, how much wonders God have done when we won't live here. So make sure you are not in the categories of those that devalue the anointing. Let's take our prayers. I'll take six of them from six different scriptures. Number one is in Psalm 91 16. It says, with long life shall it satisfy you. Psalm 91, 16. We'll read together. And look at the prayer we are going to pray. You say, whatsoever is a threat to my life. You are violating the word of God. Therefore, I command you to die. Now, what is the word of God to you? Read it together. Look at the screen. One, two, and let's go. Leave what you are writing. You will see, I will still call it. Don't worry. One, two, and let's go. With long life, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? What will God use to satisfy you? Long life. How do lawyers win in court? What do they contest? They contest standing on the law. You know, I was listening to the judgment that uh, the... What, is it judgment they will call it? Yes, it should be judgment that the tribunal gave. There's a particular suit that one of the parties brought to the tribunal challenging the, nomina the nomination of uh, uh, Shetima and uh, uh, our present president. You know what? how they stopped that case? They didn't even stop this case. They said the tribunal is a lower court. It does not have the capacity that's according to Nigerian law. It does not have the capacity to listen to such petition. And since it does not have the capacity to listen to such petition, we strike it out. You can decide to now go and present that case to a higher court. This constitution. I was also listening to a program last week. You know, they were debating that there's a new judgment. And what's the judgment given in your state? The governor has the capacity to remove the and to appoint other kings. So he can decide now to come up and say, the Bali of Ukiadu will become a king, a, a crowning king. According to the law. <laughs> now, do you know that the same thing to happen in the realm of the spirit? When you tell the devil what God has God have said, God's word says with long life, I will satisfy you. You know, the reason why some of you pray and you don't see results is because you pray based on your language. The devil does not have respect for your language. It's just that like you go to court, you are now saying, Esa, Esa, Olong, Olong, Rimipi, Oluko Kokba Mileti. He's the one that slapped me. You in the law court, you are saying, sir, we have, we, you know, sir, we have sworn by the Bible. He, he broke into my house. The other one we say, disputing that he broke into your house. Have you seen where lawyers argue case? You can say more. He will say, but you have not proved it to a reasonable doubt that his breaking into your house is Ill Ill either legal or illegal. That was how we lose the case many years ago. <laughs> I don't usually forget that. The lawyer said, it is not written in the charge sheet if my client's breaking into the church is legal or illegal. And since it was not written whether he broke in legally or illegally, he has no case to answer because the case has lost its major ingredients. Did he break in? Yes. 
Was it a legal breaking in? It was not written. Was it an illegal one? It was not written by the char- those that charged the case to court. And since it is like that, sir, what do you have to say? The magistrates look at the case, look at what the lawyer said, went to the law act, and came out to say, it is not written in the charge sheet. So, which means if the officer that brought the case have said, Mr. So so and so broke into the church illegally, it would have been binding. Since he didn't write it, we know that he broke in, but we didn't know whether he has a backing to do that. The case is hereby discharged. We work it out, the man is discharged and acquitted. Ah, I was going to say, Ah, watch it one you, watch it one you, watch it one you, like that. Tony, go rest a while, go yet, kiss you rest a while, no, yeah, Nigba to roll on so quick and wear me, give me my fish, give me my feet, tell on. Rise up, we are going to pray. Pray like somebody that knows the word of God now. Say after me. Say after me. Whatsoever. I didn't hear you. Is a threat to my life. Is violating the word of God. Therefore I command such to die in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to break, be, declare. Begin to declare. Whatsoever is a threat to my life. You are violating the word of God. Because the word of God says with long life shall he satisfy me. Therefore I command you to die. Begin to pray. Everything that is a threat to my life. Die in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. You are a child of authority. You are a child of God. Command you to die. Die in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? 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 Are you talking to the Lord? And if everything that is a threat, is this sickness that is a threat to my life now? Hear ye the voice of the Lord. It is time to die. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you, praying? Are you, praying? Are you talking to the Lord right now? Command them to die in the name of Jesus. Basata yanga da baskenere. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And Amen. Look at the second scripture in Psalm one forty-seven, verse eighteen. Hmm. I want to show you something. Psalm one forty-seven, verse eighteen. Look at this. He sent. He sendeth out his word. And what did the word of God do? And melt them. Not he let melt them. You already know see that one. <laughs> eh? Okay, they just project it now. He caused his wind to blow. Now I discover that the saint word will melt whatever is like an obstacle. Now let me ask you, who is the saint word? I didn't hear you. Who is the word of God? Jesus is the word of God. Now you will now say this. You will decree. Say by the power of your saint word, Jesus, I command every obstacle. On my way to progress, melt off now in the name of Jesus. Melt off now in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy. But the power of Jesus, the, the sent word, I command every obstacle to my progress to begin to melt off now. Are you praying for yourself? Begin to melt off now. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Regada basada yara. Lege de gedes. Basata yanga da baskede. Begin to pray, 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 begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Legada basata yara. Shaka lebo soto. Lenga da baskede. Thank you, Father. In Jesus, mighty name of prayer. We have four more. Take number three. We are stopping at six. Jeremiah 32 27. The God of all flesh. Jeremiah 32 27. Jeremiah 32 27. I want you to pray in faith. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Look at that. Is there anything too hard for me? Now say after me, God of all flesh. Nothing is hard for you. Therefore, correct now. 
every form of error in my body system in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. He's the God of all flesh. Correct now every error in my body, in my body system. Yes, you are the God of all flesh. Yes, you are the God of all flesh. Yagada bara bara bas, legede bo sanda yara basi, ba yagada basa, shagada bas kende le bosi, legada baba begin to pray, 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 begin to pray. Whatsoever error in my body is divinely corrected now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mention that medical case and begin to declare. And begin to declare. Be divinely corrected now. Be divinely corrected now. Be divinely corrected now. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Take number four. John chapter 8 verse 36. He will say, the son of God has set me free. I refuse to be bound. In the name of Jesus. John chapter 8 verse 36. John chapter 8 verse 36. He said, if the son therefore shall make you free. What will happen to you? You shall be free indeed. Say after me. Say, Jesus has set me free. I didn't hear you now. I refuse to be bound. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Jesus has set me free. Jesus has set me free. I refuse to be bound. Begin to declare. Begin to declare. I refuse to be bound. I refuse to be bound. Regada ba 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 se, shagada baske, yangada ba da ba da bas, basoto yenge de bos, shagada ba da ba da bas. I refuse to be bound. I refuse to be bound. I refuse to be bound. Jesus, mighty name we pray. I love this number five. Galatians 6 17. It says, Let no man cause me trouble. Ah, yeah. If I bear on my body the mark of Christ. Galatians 6, verse 17. From henceforth. Say it like that. From henceforth. Let no man trouble me. I bear my in my body the mark of Christ. Say after me, because I bear in my body the mark of Christ. No man shall succeed to trouble me in the name of Jesus. Begin to prophesy. Because I bear my body the mark of Christ. No man shall succeed to trouble me again in the name of Jesus. Le ba 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 sa. Ringo di adabas kenere. Reke de bos kendele bos. Shanka da ba da ba da bas. Reke de bos kandaira. No man shall cause, cause me harm. No man shall cause me harm. I bear in my body the mark of Jesus. I bear in my body the mark of Jesus. I bear in my body the mark of Jesus. I bear in my body the mark of Jesus. I bear in my body the mark of Jesus. No man shall cause me harm. No one shall cause me harm. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Take the last one. There's no time. Ephesians 1 3. The Bible says, For he has blessed us with all kinds of blessings in the heavenly realms. But you can't spend it in the heavenly realms. You will need to convert them to the what? To the natural realms. He said, Blessed be the Lord God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? In the heavenly places. Okay, no, in the heavenly places. You don't go there. That's why some people say, sir, I got vision. I saw myself in America. I got vision. I bought car. I got vision. I got this. I, and all the things they are seeing the vision, none has manifested in their physical. How do you convert spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms to natural blessings in the natural realm? You convert them by your 
finished by your confession. You do what? By your confession. The author of rich dad, poor dad said, many people are poor. Not because they are supposed to be poor. But they, because they talk poor. They are always talking poor. That's why they are poor. They are always talking poor. That's why they are poor. I can't afford it. It's not for people like us. I don't think we can do it. I don't... I just decided to go back to read all my old books. And since I started reading them again, my mindset started changing again. Don't, use, don't allow your mouth to limit you again. That you cannot afford something now does not mean you can't afford it. Are you set? Say, I call for the full manifestation of my spiritual blessings in the heavenly places to manifest in the natural world in the name of Jesus begin to manifest open your mouth and begin to declare that's the last prayer for tonight let the conversion begin to take place now let the conversion begin to take place now Let the conversion begin to take place now. Let the conversion begin to take place now. Begin to speak them to manifest. My blessings, spiritual blessings, in the heavenly realms, hear ye the voice of the Lord. I call you to manifest in the physical realm. Begin to manifest in the physical. Begin to manifest in the physical realm. Hear ye the voice of the Lord. Begin to manifest in the physical. Command me to begin to manifest. All the good things I have in the realm of the spirit, I call you now, begin to manifest for me in the natural world. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? All the realms, I, all the members of this church that are still in the spiritual realms, I call you! Begin to come to the physical church now. Begin to come to the physical church now. All the anointing that is in the realm of the spirit. I call you to the natural now. All the promises of God for my life. That are in the heavenly places. I call you into manifestation now. Begin to manifest for me for real. Call them, call them, call them. Begin to call them, call them, call them. Call your marriages to, to, to manifest. Call your children to manifest in the physical. Begin to call your children right now. Call them by the name you will call them when they come. Call them by the name you will call them. Call that business. Call that business in the realm of the spirit to come to the natural right now. Mention that your business name. Begin to call it. Begin to call it. Begin to call it. The Bible says, and God himself called those things that were not as though they were. Begin to call. mighty name of prayer father we thank you for our health is perfect and balanced we've been prophesying over this health since the first Wednesday of this month thank you because we begin to enjoy perfect health from now every abnormality in us in our health that does not glorify you and that we do not enjoy we command to stop now thank you for your hand I've corrected them Take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Put your hands together for.